Welcome everyone to this brand new season of the OC Show Season 3. This is uh, episode 3, if I'm right. So that's going to be the, the the first episode after we kick off everything from the World Tour. Uh, we kick off this new season at the HWBOT World Tour in Brazil and we're now back on track with a brand new schedule. So basically every week you will find a new episode of the show online. Uh, sometimes it's going to be recorded with Timote and Peter directly from uh, Taiwan at the HQ with all the information that you guys need and the week after usually we're gonna do the live here on Twitch on twitch.tv for slash overclocking TV uh, so this is the uh, live episode as you can guess maybe you are watching this one on uh, YouTube as the replay but today uh, we have uh, all of all of the information that we want to talk we have a few topics for that and let's get to it because uh, we have some guests with us so as you can see I've been joined with some awesome guests with us tonight to talk about everything that happened in the last weeks in the overclocking world uh, first of all Tulius uh, Tulius from India your famous and well respected overclocker in India of course uh, it's not your first time in the OC show how are you doing this man is... oh I'm doing very well <laughs> tired but doing very well well, it's it's quite early for you in the morning. Uh, for yep. uh, uh, Mike and myself, it's going to be more in the uh, more in the evening. But that, that's always uh, good to have you around here, man. Uh, was oh, always fun to have you. Always fun to have your pleasure. smile on the stream as well. It's a pleasure uh, and honor, as always, guys. <laughs> Perfect. Um, our second guest is Gunslinger, uh, as well as a well-known overclocker in the US. Uh, Gunslinger is currently number four in uh, his country and thirty-first worldwide. And Gunsiger, you are with us tonight to talk about the Pro OC Cup, uh, the Pro OC Championship, and now this uh, could be a game changer for the uh, professional overclocking leagues. How are you doing? Doing well. Glad, glad to be here. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I, I don't know if we're gonna see your dog doing the live. If he's come, uh, gonna come back for for a hug because just before we went live, it was actually uh, your your dog. What's the name of your dog, by the way? His name is Nook. 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 Wow. Yeah. <laughs> nuke or nuke? <laughs> nuke. N O O K. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, and uh, of course, as usual, Timote Xiala directly from uh, Taiwan in our studio producing the show uh, from the Overclocking TV side. How are you doing, man? Well, very good. Um, a little bit tired. Uh, I'm not sleeping very well these days, but uh, very good. Uh, it's a lot of things happening those days, and I'm really excited for uh, the next months or so. So it's going to be insane. And we're going to talk about all that because there's a lot of stuff coming in the overclocking world. For you guys watching at home, uh, right now on the live uh, channel of Twitch, the Overclocking TV live Twitch channel, uh, you can always ask us uh, the questions on the live chat. We always have something to monitor that. So if you have any question about the topics or for the guests tonight, don't hesitate to uh, ask them. So, uh, what are we going to see tonight? There's a few topics for that. Uh, the first topic is the editor's pick, basically a news that we liked uh, during the during the uh, the past week or so. And then we're gonna have a update about all the competitions that we have at OC Esports, uh, the uh, only and biggest uh, overclocking competition website. And we're gonna have the, uh, a lot of talk with uh, Gunslinger about the HWBot Pro OC Championship 2016 and why this is. Um, a game changer for uh, professional overclocking and we're going to be talking with Tullius about the Asus India OC Tour and more specifically about the event that happened last weekend and finally we'll be talking about what did happen what will happen or what did happen last weekend that is worth mentioning for you guys on the show so topic number one uh, a news that you really like this week uh, Tullius what was your uh, your pick for this week um, this week, I'm, I've been pretty excited actually. I've been I've been waiting for these drives to come out. I'm talking about um, WD just launched their uh, 8TB consumer level drives. Um, you know, so they've got a whole bunch of them out, different 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 varieties. They've got the purple, they've got the red, they've got the red pro, and um, well, compared to you know the enterprise drives, these are practically half in terms of pricing. So that's pretty interesting. It's good to see. It's good to see helium-based drives out for the consumer because, I mean, the reliability, at least for the HDSD drives, uh, is is truly, truly epic. So, if you know, we get even close to that kind of reliability on for our NAS boxes or for the desktop, that's that's pretty nice. 
And especially the uh, the Western Digital Red, there that these are the, actually the the same drive we use for the NAS at the overclocking TV. Um, they are targeted for NAS, so NAS. The, for yeah. for network storage. And so they are actually um, being made. For well, Western Digital, tell that tell us that they are being made to to be running like a lot of time and basically not stop and run, stop and run, just run and, and run, go for run, it. run, run. Yep. Uh, yeah. Especially but with people that, doing videos, they are perfect because <laughs> you need. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Us. <laughs> And for for anyone that, doing stuff like that. Stuff like that, yeah. Um, I mean, the Reds are probably the cheapest way to get big capacity right now and reliable, you know, for okay. guys who can't, you know, afford like the enterprise drives like your REs or stuff like that, or these HDSD based helium ones. But the Reds have been doing really, really well in terms of even the, the professional segment. I've seen guys put Reds into... 16 bay, 24 bay, DAS units, you know, just fine, even though they are rated to work in those environments, but they seem to cope just beautifully. So Well that's that's, that's perfect. Price. And the price is uh the price is expensive but not that not that much. Not that much. True. Because the eight terabyte for like three hundred uh US before taxes, I guess. And I, th I think the the last four terabyte I, I bought was like two twenty or something. Yeah, so it's true. Uh, last not, time I bought three terabytes, terabyte. it's about that, yeah. It's a good 100 150 dollars so it's worth it for sure for sure and i mean considering 300 bucks is for the external version right now that's basically the price for the external drive so i think maybe the internals could maybe knock another 15 20 dollars off that you know so making it even better value hopefully yeah well the, the the only risk with that is you have to use red because if you lose one drive you lose eight terabyte of data one shot so you need yeah, to have that's true at any point. that's true well, that's, you know, you lose two terabytes, so you lose eight. In the end, you still lose data. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, yeah, sure, the pain is less, but <laughs> how much less pain it is, it really depends on what you're actually losing. <laughs> true, true. And I, I wish we never lose like these kind of drive. Oh, like, so I, I don't want to lose eight terabytes. I actually, I don't want to lose ten gig of data. Well, actually, so the, never, never. Like I say, the, the only backup you miss is the one you didn't do, right? <laughs> That's true. In fact, on extreme systems, there was, I mean, in like the storage section, uh, somebody had this amazing, amazing signature. And like, I just remember the signature. I've forgotten who it was, but I remember the signature. It says, Jesus saves, but God backs up. And that <laughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, really cool. That's so damn true. Well, uh, thank you, Tolius, for uh, for this uh, for this news. I didn't even knew about the uh, that they wanted to to go uh, with eight terabyte drive. So that's that's good to know. Um, Gunslinger, what would be yours? Um, I just been following the uh, the progress that people are are making on the IHS improvements for uh, Skylake overclocking, uh, doing the spacers, and then I saw where a guy made one out of. Uh, made his own IHS out of copper. It had a little mm -hmm. bit more mass. Um, it's just something I've been watching because I've, I've been struggling myself uh, maintaining a good mount, trying to bench my chips. So I've uh, been watching that pretty closely. Me too. In fact, I lost a chip last night, benching. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's tough. Aye, aye, aye. And it's gone. And it's gone, yep. Yeah. It was, was it because of the fine. mount? Or? I, so I, I really don't know because I mean I managed to run six five eight zero HW bar prime and then I you know I got greedy as usual and I went for six six and well it it ran the benchmark but then just before the score popped up you know the system froze and then it I hit restart and it was zero zero and that was that <laughs> uh, <laughs> goodbye <laughs> hey, at least uh, I managed to save the the earlier run but yeah that kind of sucks. Gunslinger, um, why this, is this so interesting for you to follow uh, the, the, this way that new pe people make new type of IHS for, for Skylake? Um, for me, it's I haven't had a good mainstream CPU since I think uh, the 3770K days. So, and I've got I've got two chips now uh, that are good. I just need to figure out how to maintain my mount uh, so that I can pull out some good scores. So definitely for the people that just join us on Twitch, um, the the issue with the AI, AHS is first there's the terminal pass in between, but then there's the the mounting that you have to to it. Uh, will ha will the, the the fact to have a higher mass on the AHS will solve some of the issues? Uh, I don't I don't know if it'll stop because 
uh, for my my case, uh, I think what I'm losing, I'm losing the contact between the die and the IHS. So I don't I don't necessarily know that a little bit more mass in the IHS is going to solve that problem. Um, but I've I've got a, a spacer coming, um, so that that'll be one of the things that I try to help improve it. But. It's interesting to see that we have to. <laughs> Modify the CPUs directly and not just the settings anymore. <laughs> really, <laughs> it's getting artistic. <laughs> it is. It is. It's. It's truly getting creative. Actually, the solutions that have that that have come out for these CPUs. I mean, I've never seen invention like this just for CPUs and deleting and you know just wow. Yeah, that, that cool. remind pretty me cool. some. That remind me some of the time with the uh, Atlan XP where you can just uh, you no know, shortcut some of the uh, of the points. With the uh, L1 yeah. and L2 to get more cache and stuff like this, well, it was fun to do, and it's it's a new way to do stuff because we cannot modify anything on the CPU directly, but just everything that is around the package. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting to True. see what the guys can uh, can come up with. Uh, Xialam, what will be your pick for this week or actually the past weeks? Uh, so um, you know, I like all the the, the, the small computer things and uh, Raspberry Pi, which is a brand I follow very often. And regularly uh, just released a new one again. <laughs> so this one is Raspberry Pi 3. So that's the official one. We had the, the two before. And the main difference is that uh, so the price is uh, slightly be the same, more or less, 35 US dollars. But the cool thing is that uh, improved CPU. So 64 bits, 1.2 gigahertz. So that's 300 megahertz more than uh, than the previous one, and well, on the website they say it's ten times more, you know, than the first Raspberry yeah, Pi. Yeah, but and the first one, but the first one was the very first one. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not really comparing comparable stuff, but even then, like it's still very interesting, and Raspberry Pi is still really cool. The cool addition that is one of the major thing I think why Raspberry Pi sucked until now was the fact that it has no wireless radios at all, so no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no, nothing. Uh, so now it's on board, <laughs> which is great. So uh, I think a lot of people will finally uh, uh, start using it for more stuff than just, uh, you know, uh, small projects where you still have to add a dongle for everything to get to work wirelessly, etc. So uh, a lot just of for that, you save start. two USB ports. Just for that, you save two USB you, ports. You say USB port, you save it extensions or whatever you're saving. It's It's always good to have it on board and always much better to have it integrated straight with the system than having to rely you know, on extra USB connectivity drivers and whatever you know, whatever could come through USB nowadays. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to stay in stock because uh, the previous editions were not staying much in stock either since it's so popular. Uh, the one, but maybe, you know, maybe they knew they wanted to release the, the, the version 3, so they didn't stock that much of the Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Pi 2, because it's only a year that the yeah, other one was well, out. Also, the one that ran out quick was the Raspberry Pi 0, the one they have here. So that was the $5 one that was the size of a, you know, of a, I don't know, it's like a thumb drive almost, a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. But uh, So that one sold out pretty quick, and they had it bundled with some magazine, etc. So um, Raspberry Pi, yeah, it's cool stuff. Like... Um, it's going to be interesting to see more Internet of Things stuff. And uh, I wish it would have been released earlier because I would have used it for, for my little project. Um, yeah, so well, in the end, I'm using something else, which is a little bit more expensive. But then again, like I was saying to Tullius before, that's the thing with technology. You choose one thing and you go with it. And while well, you have no choice, you have to kind of continue because if not, you keep changing project every two weeks. There's always something especially, new coming. Especially with hardware, especially with the yeah. kind of uh, IoT hardware, like Internet of Things hardware. There's so oh, yeah. many new versions being released. And well, because you it's should still be, very new, you should right? be hardware so agnostic. Quick, you should be hardware agnostic. Quick. Yeah. yeah. So you should, your solution should be hardware agnostic as the maximum. And then you can just uh, yeah. plug all your system because well you can always my solution is always usable right you can always end up plugging it somehow to the different buses adapting but you're gonna use a breadboard and some kind of weird adapter <laughs> everything is possible it's just not gonna be beautiful <laughs> so doing a final <laughs> product with those boards is not the not possible it's always going to be prototypes and things like that that's why it's actually made for yeah prototyping uh, iot on my side, uh, the the peak of the of the past weeks actually it's not past weeks. It's upcoming this weekend to be true in less than seven hours. That's uh, IEM Intel Extreme Master in Katowice in Poland. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, gaming going around. Uh, I think it's like less than yeah less than seven hours from now. Uh, there's going to be uh, Counter Strike Go. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, different tournaments. Um, for you guys that 
I, I guess that if you are on Twitch, you know about uh, IEM. That's the uh, Intel Extreme Masters, and they've been doing this uh, kind of event quite uh, quite a lot around the world. Uh, there's going to be Counter Strike Go. There's going to be uh, League of Legend, and there's going to be StarCraft Two uh, matches. I can't wait to see the Counter Strike Go. I, I've I've been playing Counter Strike like uh, back in the days when it was uh, not CS Go but CS. Uh, 1.5 and 4. I actually did stop when they they switched they switched to 1.6, but it's it's still fun to watch. I, I like the way they did the uh, the commentary and the way they prepared the show and so on. And these helped us a lot at Overclocking TV. On uh, we do the uh, coverage for the World Tour nowadays. Uh, we've been watching a few of the uh, of the games and how they do it. And as a side note, um, not all stream are equal. I don't know if you guys heard, but they have they had a Dota 2 tournament I think that was last weekend or the week before and they did actually fire up uh, the Gabe Newell the guy from uh, the, the manager from Valve did actually fire up the guy on the live so basically they went on the match commenting on the match and the, and the way back the presenter the main presenter was not even there anymore because <laughs> he was making in comments and, and, and weird stuff and well there's been some issue, but the IEM streams are always well made. Uh, the the show was good, and the comment the commentators. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to meet them when we were uh, when they were here at the uh, ESWC, the Electronic Sports uh, World Cup. That is actually you now changing the name, Electronic, Electronic Sports World Convention. And uh, super fun guys, super fun, and they they love their their job and they do this as a passion and not just as work. So that's gonna be something that we're gonna be watching this weekend and uh, between the <laughs> few streams. Uh, if I if there's some overclicking streams over the weekend, uh, I would have like maybe a, a few of them. Well, uh, thank you guys for being here with us. That's the Overclicking TV hey. Twitch channel, and now we're going to topic number two. Timothy, Shala, yes. what are the latest update about the competitions? Uh, so it's been uh, pretty hectic uh, for the beginning of the year. Yeah, like I was mentioning in the recorded episode with uh, with Peter. Um, so I'm not going to go over all the competitions I already mentioned. I'm just going to go quickly uh, over the fact that the Gigabyte Z170 Winter OC Challenge is uh, now over. <laughs> and um, so it's been a quite interesting challenge. Uh, Z170 based uh, Gigabyte motherboards, of course. Uh, some overclockers are involved in all the different divisions or how, like sub challenges, how you would call it. So there was an Ambient 2 core once, there was a Ambient 4 cores, there was Extreme 2 cores and Ambient 4 cores, which is great. So it gives everyone the, the opportunity to play with whichever CPU or range or type of cooling they actually enjoy. As there were some lucky draws as well and results should be announced pretty soon, I suppose. So uh, cool competition from Gigabyte there. Another competition that also ended uh, was the old school uh, is best school season uh, two round two. This one ended like uh, so just uh, yesterday before yesterday. If you are <laughs> on my time, <laughs> uh, so the old school is best school. That's uh, also a very fun uh, team competition. And as you can see, we have for the first time two Greek teams in the top. So that we have the HW Box Elas OC team and the Hellas Overclocking team. Interesting fact: it's pretty much the same same teams, right? Because those guys are all friends, all together. And uh, so it's um, yeah, it's cool. It's uh, it's quite interesting. There's the hard OCP chess team as well. The, that is third, and uh, some of the regular team we are seeing. Interestingly, no Coquitlan to be seen, uh, and uh, Overclock.net also disappeared from that one. So we'll see if they are back on the next one. Next one, which is actually starting, uh, started yesterday or today, if you are in the, on the US time zone. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting. 3D Marco One uh, with GeForce 4 and Socket A. So if you're into that old stuff, this is a cool competition for you as well that you might want to check out. Uh, Rookie Rumble number 28. Uh, that's our famous uh, rookie competition 234 participants at the moment and this one is going to run until March 5th right now a lot of the UK guys which I'm pretty sure are in team MLG and um, I wouldn't be surprised maybe some scores have been done over the weekend who knows and um, novice nimble novice uh, number seven that's the team competition for the guys in the novice league 27 teams at the moment same ends on the on the fifth overclock that Nelly here is in the lead uh, getting uh, I guess they are pretty active helping out their, their new recruits, so that's really good. Hardware Radio C, official team from Italy, is second, and Overclockers.ua, also another very active team on the scene from Ukraine, in third place. 
And then moving on to the Pro C, but I guess we're gonna talk t about this. A we're gonna talk bit about more. that one right now. <laughs> yeah. So actually, so the, just quickly going over the, the score. So this one is running from February 1st to March 31st. So there's still a limited, little bit of time left in there uh, with some stages closing earlier. So guys, if you're involved, pay attention to the deadlines. Right now, currently, Dan Cup is in the lead, followed by Splave and Dr. Weiss. Uh, and some other also very extreme actively overclockers there, extreme addicts from Poland. We have Lucky Noob, the Bench Bros, uh, Perry Kabari, etc. So yeah, some pretty strong players in there. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention last, uh, the Skylake 5G Tweaker Challenge, which we don't have a banner for. So if someone is up for making an awesome banner for this competition, it's 2560 by 400 pixels. So <laughs> if you guys are feeling artistic about it, making a cool Tweakers Challenge banner, go ahead. 58 overclockers involved here. And the goal is, of course, to get the, um, the best efficiency with Skylake. Dan Cup is right now in the lead, followed by the French. Yes, NVIDIA Forever 2 and Nick. So, yeah, a lot of competition, plenty to choose from if you want to get involved. Well, thank you, Timothy. And uh, I want to give a shout out to some of the guys on the live chat. Build Zoid from UK, uh, Mind Blowing G from Canada, and SoForce1990 from Taiwan. Welcome, guys, to uh, the live chat. If you have any questions for the guests, don't hesitate to uh, let us know. Uh, topic number three, the Pro OC Championship. And that's why, Gunslinger, you are here with us tonight. Um, so... Basically, you are the manager of the Pro OC Championship League. Uh, as you will be, you are actually the best to present that. Can you present what is uh, what is it about for uh, this special league? Well, it's it's a competition for our, our top tier uh, overclockers at HW Bot. Uh, it, it this this year we're using a brand new format uh, where previously we had been. Uh, two-man teams, three-man teams, four-man teams. Uh, this year it's it's uh, one or two guys uh, using, a, using an existing HW bot account. And each round has five stages, just like uh, like we've done all, all through the other years. But uh, this year, instead of uh, having a, a round open for the, you know, six weeks, seven weeks, or whatever it is, we're having uh, submission windows where for stage one, the window's open for two, three days, and the guys have to get their submissions in on time. Um, and then we have the window opens again for the next stage two weeks later. So what we're trying to do with that is to increase uh, or keep people interested in the competition instead of just you know being flooded at the end of the at the end of the period with all the scores and and really only paying attention to, to where people finished in the top, you know, top three, four, or whatever. Okay, so there's a submission window so people can bench before, but they have to submit in the specific windows. Uh, window specific time. window, yes. Uh, the benchmarks were announced beforehand, and the wallpaper was provided beforehand, so they're free to bench at any time, but they have to make the submission windows uh, as, as scheduled. So better not go in vacation during that submission window then. <laughs> or on vacation, at least uh, have some somebody lined up to uh, make your submission for you. Oh. <laughs> so uh, how long is usually the uh, submission window for that? Uh, I think it's uh, 36 hours, maybe 48, something like that. Um, right now, it's still kind of in the early feeling out stages. We may look at maybe a two or three day window down the road, but right now, I believe it's 36 hours to 48 hours, something like that. Okay, so the uh, the Pro OC Championship addresses today are overclocker by themselves competing against other overclockers, uh, n not teams anymore. Um, for the most part, yeah, there there are um, I think one or two two man teams, but again, it's not a it's not a team name. They're just one overclocker is getting the credit and then the other overclocker is providing assistance. Uh, so, so they had to they, make they a can new account use or something. on one account, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh. Yeah. So I guess it's That's maybe not worth it for most of the guys, which is why they do it alone, I suppose, to have their name out, right? Yeah, uh, historically, uh, the team has kind of made sense because there was, there was a lot of hardware variation uh, that was required over the course of the stages, where okay. this year, um, the way we set it up, we kind of said beforehand, we're going to use Z170, we're going to use X99, and we're going to try to limit it to maybe two GPUs 
you know, max instead of running a full full blown four card setup. Okay. Um, so far, all the people that can participate to that, do they have to register somewhere, or they like anyone is eligible for 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 this? Uh, one? Anybody is eligible, um, but, but we ask that they uh, message us so that we can get them set up. They can't just join on their own. They've got to actually be added to the competition by uh, a moderator. But this one is targeting like pro OC, so professional uh, overclockers. So people that want to do this at the high level of competition in a, a very high competitive uh, in a very high competitive way for that. Yeah, we're so, definitely targeting the elite league, uh, the extreme league, and kind of try to, I guess, show show the the other leagues. You know, this is this is what it looks like on the top end, and and to try to maybe push them to move up a move up a league. Okay, so the side these it. people are actually the best guys fighting against each other then. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, so, far, <laughs> so far we have uh, 10 people in the uh, in this Pro OC Championship. Uh, Dan Cops, Play, Dr. Wiz, Ralph, uh, Firekiller GR, Extramatic, Lukinu, Bench Bros, Jones965 and Perika Barry. Um, there is uh, I'm gonna say that the it, it's quite diverse. There's uh, the two German guy, but everything else, everyone else is from different countries. So that's actually widespread around the world. So it's not even targeting one specific region anymore. Yep, it's definitely a, a global competition. That's uh, I think that's good, especially with the submission window. Uh, that would actually that would actually be fun to do like a live for the submission window. That could be fun to uh, that could be fun to see. We should we should talk about that uh, a bit if a bit it, after. If it's a uh, bit less than forty eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can just do the two last the last two hours, but still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I guess everything comes in in the last hours. Those guys are pros, after all, right? <laughs> <laughs> Overlooking the time to submit at the last minute. <laughs> um, five five times we... open with submission forms. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's like getting tickets for a very uh, well uh, well known. Uh, festival in, in Belgium, I won't say the name. Um, uh, what can we expect from a spectator point of view from this competition? So why will a random Joe actually watching the live stream here uh, on Twitch over Clicking TV channel uh, go and check out this competition? Uh, for the most part, there's get, there's going to be some some good uh, like review, how-to and guide type content. Uh, both written and then there's also uh, the live stream stuff that Dr. Weez has done as well as uh, Firekiller and Phil um, They've done some video work as well And once we can get that into the platform and get it where people can can review it and Read what they've done or watch the videos. I think that uh, that'll draw some interest in So so that's the thing there's not there's not just the scores. There's actually a lot of content around that yeah, there's 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 two facets to the the Pro OC Championship. You have guys that are not in the program and but are competing. And you have guys that are in what we're calling the program, which is our our HyperX uh, sponsored side of it. Um, the guys that are in the program, they receive some hardware support, some financial support to compete in exchange for the content that they make, whether it's you know the live streams, the uh, review type stuff or the the guides the how-to guides and things like that okay that's so the uh, as we can see right now on the screen that's uh, dr wiz from south africa is actually uh, taking part in the actually ranking third in this uh, championship right now and he's doing he's doing a lot of live and uh, he's posting like a work log like the uh, oc work log so he's basically like uh, s explaining what he did uh, he did try to do and stuff like this so it's quite interesting to see Finally, to see some content being produced around the uh, around the scores, and uh, I've been watching some of the uh, of Doctor Who's stream, and you can see for like two hours he's struggling to get the the best score, and uh, it's explaining why he's trying to do uh, to do it this way. So it's actually that's actually uh, good to have some content around all that. Um, you did you did uh, talk about HyperX. So do you have some extra partners uh, for uh, for this uh, Pro OC Championship? Uh, for this season, HyperX is the only is the only partner that we have. Yeah. So they are uh, for the people in the program. Uh, how does that work? Uh, how it works is they re uh, for like round one. They receive uh, everybody receives the same set of retail hardware. 
um, and then in exchange, they also get they get a small you know uh, financial offset to help with LN2 costs and you know just the expenses that go in with extreme overclocking in exchange for the content like Dr. Weiss's video. Um, Extreme Attic did a how-to uh, guide on how to bin uh, memory, um, and then uh, the the Greek guys did uh, did it a live Q and A, and had a pretty good audience for that. So that's definitely good to see uh, new content being produced around that. We've been waiting for for these two people to do it for for quite some time. It's now happening. That's I'm super excited for it to be honest. Um, uh, if we want to follow some of these overclockers, what would be the best way? Uh, going through OC Esports or somewhere else? Um, uh, in the future, OC Esports will be the best. Um, we're in the middle of upgrading the competition page, uh, so all the content eventually will be embedded right into the page. Um, but some of the guys have, I think they've done some forum, forum posts. Um, Dr. Weez has, has uh, worked with you guys on his content. And uh, Firekiller and Phil have done theirs on YouTube. Um, Lucky Noob has done uh, he's done some uh, written written articles that'll be on the web page uh, when it's up up and running. And uh, looking forward to what Splay's got uh, as well as far as a written written content. So. Well, that's good, and I, I'm pretty sure some of these guys have a Facebook fan page. Uh, I know that Doctor Wiz have one. I know that uh, Fire Killer here was talking about making one as well. So, uh, guys, if you want to have their uh, Facebook, go on uh, the OC Show uh, Facebook page, like us, and we'll post some of the links after this show. Uh, so far, let's go back to some of the scores and how the competitions are because this Pro OC Championship is already running for uh, for some times. So we have Stage One and Stage Two that are over. Uh, so far, it's been a massive takeover by Denkop. He finished first <laughs> in the two stage. <laughs> the German Panzer at, uh, at work again. And uh, stage three, uh, it's not even started yet. It's starting very soon. Correct. Uh, this one, uh, this one is a little bit different than the earlier stages is there's really, there's not, there's not any of the limits. Okay, uh, so so we can we can just talk about the the stage one and stage two to to explain why then it's to be very different on stage three. Okay, uh, stage one we did uh, three mark three D Mark O one uh, with a dual core CPU Z one seventy chipset, and when it opened, um, I don't know that everybody had really had a whole lot of time to to bin for good CPUs, so they were kind of rushed. Uh, so maybe this maybe the scores weren't quite uh, as high as maybe if they had but were had been able to use their 6700Ks, um, and then going into stage two, uh, we we did a, a fixed clock uh, XTU round at 5.5 gigahertz, and uh, here it was uh, it was AFR run on nitrogen against uh, uh, B die on air. Um, which kind of limited things there, so. Uh, but still, the, the score in stage, uh, the score are quite uh, close, at least for the top five. Uh, they're usually quite close yeah. in, the, in terms of the score, ex except Dan Cop, that is actually way ahead in stage two. But for stage one, uh, between Dan Cop and Extrematic that were actually fighting for the top, there is like 94 points in three remarkable one. That's like that's like nothing. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was that's funny. like rerunning. That that's just like a rerunning again, and just expecting to have some more points. I was talking to uh, XA after the window had closed, and after the window closed, he discovered that his CPU could run like another two or three hundred megahertz higher, which would have put him in the first place. But, but his so window would have been closed. Good then. <laughs> <laughs> too bad it was too late. And we can see on the picture it was like at minus 180C, minus 180 degrees. So that, uh, these, oh, these are some, some good, uh, good pictures of the guys benching. And uh, so, so these stage one and stage two had some special uh, limitation to it. Uh, so that was like a smooth start to say, to say the least. And how does that gonna change for stage three? Uh, stage three, that's it's going to be wide open. It's going to be the best CPUs, the best GPUs on the best chipset, and it's. Uh, I would not be surprised to, to see some top three, maybe a new world record come out of this stage. Interesting. Um, that's 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 something we're going to be definitely following. Uh, when is the uh, submission window for this one? Is it already announced? 
it opens up, I think, uh, this Saturday. Uh, well, four days and nine hours it opens up. Hey, <laughs> so in uh, so yeah, that's that, that's gonna be this weekend. So this weekend, while I will be watching the IEM, I will also be watching the scoreboard of the Pro OC Championship 2016 for the stage number three. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting to uh, to see what the guys can come up with. Um, what can we expect from the next few stages? Uh, stage four, we've got uh, dual core CPU again, uh, again Z170 chipset, and this time it's uh, Super Pi 32M. So should be should be some nice scores come out of that round. Mm. Uh, some of the guys will uh, will show off the tweaking, I guess. Yeah, and then uh, we wrap up stage five of round one is going to be a high memory clock on Z170. So maximum memory frequency that the guys can reach with uh, with the the hardware they have. Yeah. Perfect. So that's gonna be good. Um, uh, that's that's gonna be only for the round one. How many rounds are we gonna have this year? Uh, we've got three rounds scheduled for the year. Um, let me pull it up here. Just a rough rough schedule. Uh, round two will run over May and June, and then uh, round three is August and September. Uh, round one wraps up at the end of March. So, so there's one month. Uh, there's actually 30 days left for round one to uh, to happen. That there's still three stages to uh, to be in there. So that's going to be quite packed in terms of uh, people benching for the for the next few weeks. That's going to be interesting to see. And um, the round two that's going to be right during Computex. So I guess some of the guys will be uh, going to Computex to bench, especially for that. Maybe at some of the uh, OC lab in uh, in Taiwan. Or just at Can't the World Tour, who knows? Or just at <laughs> the World Tour. They're selling two free all week, tour. right? If it's included <laughs> in your ticket, You're why not? That, that's going to be fun to see. Um, yeah, thank you for all the information, but I want to go a little bit back to uh, wha how you, how did you get involved in uh, in this and you end up being the manager for this uh, Pro OC Championship? Um, I, I guess I got involved by... Uh, uh, offering my opinions on how to improve or try to improve the process. Uh, we had we had gotten to the point where the Pro OC Cup had just it had kind of gotten stagnant. Uh, we didn't have any new people really wanting to get in and, and the people that were participating weren't necessarily giving it all they had. I mean there were some you know so-so scores and, and really uh, financially it was getting hard to compete because there's some pretty good uh, requirements for system specs on some of the rounds. So, so especially changing from being a team-based pro uh, professional overclocker, it's now uh, a personal-based uh, based team. So the requirement is actually uh, easier to uh, to manage. You don't have to to seed five people. You, you can seed only one. And uh, what what have been the biggest challenge so far for you uh, managing this uh, pro seed championship? Probably the, the global aspect and the people that, that I'm working with just being scattered all over in different time zones, it's made, uh, you know, keeping up with them and communicating with them uh, uh, a challenge. Uh, well, welcome to our world. That's uh, Xiala and me. We, we were spread like with twelve-hour difference on time zones, so we kind of get used to that over the time. But still, uh, I, I definitely feel you on that. Uh, well, thank you very much, Gunslinger, for all this information. And we do expect you guys watching this live stream here on uh, Overclocking TV Twitch channel or watching that as the replay on YouTube to go and follow this competition because that's going to be quite interesting to follow along the year. I'm pretty sure we're gonna uh, find you again in the in the in some next OC show to talk about the, the new rounds and the new stage and maybe some of the uh, of the winners of the of the rounds. Uh, thank you, Gunstinger, for uh, all the information. Topic number four is this India OC tour, and I kind of uh, sold the punch uh, while saying that. So, to you, you're a famous uh, overclocker from India, and well, f for people that saw you the first time, that was at the uh, HW anniversary gathering in 2014 in Taiwan, and since then you have oh, been. 2015 last year, World Tour. 2015. <laughs> yeah, it was 2015. Oh yeah, 2015. 2015. 2015 yeah. Oh, sorry, man. Why did I put like? Okay, anyway, so that was 2015 last year, and since then we have been uh, following you a lot, and you have been working. Uh, at the front and behind the scene to promote overclocking in your country, in India. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what was your last project? 
Well, um, it's actually a, it's actually an ongoing project. Um, last year, um, Asus started this concept here called the Asus um, India OC Tour, where we want to build um, a whole base of you know young new overclockers because um, this is uh, well this this is one of the reasons why we do what we do. So you know you want the next generation to come out and push you know the limits of overclocking. So. Uh, Asus came up with this concept along with us that we should maybe target every major city in the country, you know, at least like three or four or five cities in the country every year. So get more youngsters and get more kids, get more gamers, get people from, you know, colleges and stuff. Just more more involved with uh, overclocking and, you know, taking part in competitions and stuff like that. So that was the whole um, basis for having this event, just grow the community. So, so you, had, you had the events for the first event for 2016 last weekend. Yes. So uh, how was it? Where where, where was it? So what was um, the, the of this, this event? This event was uh, actually held in Calcutta or Kolkata, uh, but this was basically done uh, in in conjunction with Asus, uh, like I was mentioning. Um, we had about 40 to 45 um, oh, overclockers or people come in to take part in the overclocking championship as well as you know, uh, come experience the liquid nitrogen demo and just just basically we're trying to get rid of the fear that people have here about liquid nitrogen and extreme overclocking and stuff like that because kids over here still they haven't seen stuff like this um, it's not very common so <laughs> they they get it's it's very common for people to get scared of stuff like this and they're like no this is you're gonna you know blow up stuff or you know stuff is gonna catch fire and they're like no if you if you do stuff well nothing's gonna happen so we actually had this workshop um, which we held an hour before the event started where I mean I'd I'd put it up on Facebook that whoever wants to you know watch this prep and wants tips and tweaks and stuff like that about overclocking personally they can come an hour they could come in an hour earlier and you know we sit down and have a personal one on one so. That was nice. I got to interact with, you know, a whole bunch of new kids. Good to see lots of enthusiasm, lots of lo lots and lots of questions. Uh, that's that's always well. Good to well, see. you were there for that, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I was there for. So always, but it's good to see. It's really heartening to see that these kids, you know, they're they're really really interested. They're enthusiastic. I mean. Um, just the fact that a 15-year-old uh, came in second, you know, there was there, there, there was like this bunch of kids, real, really, oh, no. really young kids, 13, 14, 15, and a 15-year-old came in second in the overclocking championship. So I mean, in the overclocking competition there. So that was beautiful to see. Well, that, that's that's fun to see. And uh, as I said in the introduction, I, I I quite sold the punch, but you guys are doing a tour with that. Yes. Um, the plan is to hit at least four or five cities this year. Now, um, last year we did we did Bombay, um, Mumbai. Now we did Calcutta, and then we're probably going to hit Bangalore this year in May. That's kind of what the plan is looking like. Middle of May we're going to hit Bangalore, and then maybe Delhi, and then we're going to have the finals. Uh, where basically the way we're running this is all the guys who win at all of these uh, competitions, we're going to fly them down to Bombay uh, end of the year where we have the finals here and that's going to be on liquid nitrogen so they're going to be you know um yeah they're going to they're going to have to they're going to have to train a little bit for that they're <laughs> going to have to train a little bit yeah so we're making parts available for all of them you know we're going to send them parts now all the winners are going to get um liquid nitrogen pots and insulation and stuff like this and guides we're making these little videos and sending them on pen drive so we want them to prepare, we, we want them to you know, try stuff by themselves, we want them to get rid of the fear. It's When you try is when you know you realize, hey, it's not so difficult, even I can do this. So that's the whole point behind this, just get more and more people in. Well, that's uh, that's going to be quite interesting to see. Uh, what wh Who are the kind of people that usually attend this event? You said there's like uh, about 40 people, but like very young people. Uh, what, um, what, what it was... Like? It was it was actually a mixed bag. We had we had like we had guys who are actually um, famous radio jockeys here who are who are also enthusiasts. You know, guys who are 35, 40, 50. So, oh, from people from all all age groups actually. But a lot of youngsters, a lot of youngsters, a lot a lot of actually kids, which is beautiful to see because. I mean, the fact that we get a lot of these, uh, I mean, we get a lot of older people who maybe, you know, they they like what they see, but they just don't have the time because 
because of work and stuff like this. So these kids, they've got good amounts of free time on their hands right now. They're passionate about it. So yeah, it's 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 actually yeah. Well, I guess it's all the one way to, uh, to to tackle the issue that you have in uh, in India. That uh, getting the LN2 is sometimes complicated. You need to find a supplier. You need to find a way to to think. You need to have some hardware as well. And I guess sure. from what I remember from the talk, it's still quite expensive in India to uh, to order LN2. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, well, honestly, I've been I've been lucky because I have like this special connection here in Bombay where I get my LN2 kind of cheap. But for the rest of the guys. In India, it is it is pretty expensive. You're you're looking at close to a dollar and a half to maybe two dollars a liter at times, depending on where you are in in the country. Here in Bombay, uh, because there's you know there's there's plenty of suppliers and stuff like that, so you can get pretty cheap in Bombay. But that's not the case yet, you know. Well, in India is a huge country as well, so depending where you live, that's going to change a lot. It's massive, yeah. And certain states have different laws where you need permissions. There's like a tax. Yeah, and stuff. it looks like the US. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I couldn't. I just, I just couldn't believe it because once the event was over, I was like, hmm, maybe I can take some of this Alento and carry on benching, you know, uh, at the hotel room or wherever I am. Yeah, I was like, can I, can I, can I take this? And they were like, no, you know, you need permissions to ship it to a certain place, and we have permissions to ship it here, and we can't move it elsewhere. And, just like oh boy complications <laughs> yeah that's uh, we know that a lot with the uh, with the world or like all the regulation that you have to to be uh, to, to take care to, to do that safely because that's important yes uh, we use that a lot we train people to make it safe to use or safe ish to use but still this is this is like it's uh, dangerous. industrial yes yeah it's still dangerous yeah. there's no issue as long as you know to use it so yes, correct yeah. That, that's always good. Um, last question for you. What was your highlight of the weekend? What did um, what did shock you or you will remember about this weekend? Oh, so many, so many. Benching with Hazan is always, always a pleasure. It's it's just it's just you know it's an honor to work and you know just stand by him and watch him at work. So that's always a highlight. Um, Watching all these kids get so excited about LN2 and about benching and overclocking, that's a total highlight. Um, kids as young as 15 coming for the show, that's definitely a highlight for sure. You know, at least that proves that we're doing something right. You know, we're, we're, we're attracting the kind of people and younglings and I mean the youngsters that we want. Younglings were. But, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, this is basically why I do what I do. So there's no other reason. I want this, I want the overclocking scene in India to grow. I want 50, 60, 70 people overclocking, pushing, pushing the limit because it's it's the case that in in every other country, pretty much, you know, from Europe or from America or from Canada or, you know, wherever. So other countries have this community. It's it's something that I want to build here very, very, very badly. Well, so so far it seems that you are on track for it. So good luck with that. Uh, good luck. I'm gonna for... give it my best shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always good to uh, to see that. Thank you for all the information about that. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna see you a lot of. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna get, be a guest for some of the OC show again this year. I'm pretty sure for that. It's always fun to have you uh, on, on the always show. Always ready. Your smile there. Always ready. It's always a pleasure. I mean, if I you guys make it possible to come here, and, you know blare my heart out in public, which kind of feels good, you know, so. <laughs> will do, will do. Uh, thank you. Last topic for tonight, the roundup of last week or upcoming week's events. Uh, last week was literally packed with overclocking events. So there there was uh, the, um, the uh, Asus, Asus India OC tour in Kolkata. So that was one in India. Was, then there yeah. was one in UK uh, that was called the Big Freeze. That was the first one to be organized. That was mostly organized by volunteer, mostly uh, Gavbon from uh, Player.net and Obscure from Paradox. UK. Uh, and Obscure Paradox, uh, Lewis. Uh, they were, uh, but there, there was more people than than just uh, them too. But true, true. these was an event uh, happening in Sheffield in UK. The location was named the Portal. And actually, the room they were in was quite interesting. The design was uh, not that bad, like completely black wall with the the portal and the and the logo and everything was uh, was 
was fun. The um, they were actually streaming all weekend on Twitch, uh, not on OCTV, but on their own channel. But we were re-hosting everything on Overclocking TV. So not sure you guys get the notification, but if you want to get all the notification when we do re-host or stream stuff here on Twitch, you can always subscribe to uh, to our channel here, Overclocking TV on twitch.tv um, they had a LAN party and an overclocking party at the same time and if you guys follow the live we we, we saw 8pack uh, the one of the top guys from UK he was trying to break high score with a four way of GTX 980 Ti Matrix uh, Matrix wow. card and they, they had some no having four way working is, j is not talking about LN2 just having four-way systems working. working. This is, is actually an achievement. Yeah, achievement. It is. <laughs> but <laughs> having a four-way system working under LN2 is just life achievements. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> I, I know just a few people in the world that can do it. Exactly. And so far, there's uh, Eight Pack, Derbauer, and Vince, uh, Kingping. That's the, the only NXA. guys I know they can. And XA. Yeah, actually, XA is true as well. Um, that was actually fun to see because uh, they were you no know, discussing between them and why what was uh, why it could be uh, why it could be not working or what was the issue that they were having. So it was quite interesting to uh, to follow as well. And the um, we had fun although trying to see a uh, gaff bond from uh, player.net. It was uh, okay. I will do how to on how to insulate the board. So you took the Vaseline, insulate the board, and everything. And then <laughs> 45 minutes later, it's like oh damn, I burned the PSU, burned the CPU. <laughs> So, seems like his installation was not that good, but still, that was fun to that was fun to see. Uh, big up to you, Gav, Lewis, all the guys uh, that did attend uh, or organized the event. That was um, a lot of work for you guys, from what we could have seen from here. Um, good up, keep up the good work, and we hope that's going to be uh, the big freeze number two in uh, in in UK. And uh, we did talk with Gav on um, the week before, and the main goal for them was to start again to promote overclocking and extreme overclocking in UK to more people and so, so far the big freeze the big freeze number one was uh, quite a success for that so we can't wait to see what will be next on the other side of Europe the same weekend last weekend there was uh, Achilles that was doing um, a meetup for the team uh, uh, team Hungary OC uh, overclocking OC. team yep. so we saw some of the some of the picture on Facebook. They seems to had a lot of fun, and from what I I had as information, there was uh, Achilles organizing that, um, Overclocker 886, Toyon, Subaru WRC, Jonia, uh, John i5, Halpi, Cosmo, and North This. So all these guys wow. were actually uh, gathered in one room with Ellen 2 and they were having fun uh, all weekend long for for that benching. I didn't um, I didn't check the score they made. But uh, so far, we had uh, some pictures and information from Achilles. So that was about the event from last weekend. Um, Timote, do you want to say what's, uh, what's soon to come? Soon to come, a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Way yeah. too much. So, so there's going to be some more events, right? Like uh, for sure, uh, in different countries, every uh, team or organizer, like we saw, is trying to do something. So that's uh, that's really great. Uh, I hear there's going to be a HWX uh, event in Spain coming up uh, somewhere around uh, mid-April. So this is uh, to be confirmed in the next day by Centino X, uh, who is uh, co-organizing that uh, with his uh, team. And then there's, of course, um, the HDIBOT World Tour 2016, which is going to have some more stops uh, very soon. Uh, it's going to be a pretty packed month. So in uh, about two weeks, from the 18th uh, to the 20th, we will be at the Rage Expo in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. So if you are around South Africa, come uh, to the Rage Expo. It's uh, very cheap tickets to get in. And we're going to teach you um, the basics of overclocking, get you into a small tournament for amateurs. And if you're an extreme overclocker or to be extreme overclocker, we've got uh, some dry ice as well as some uh, LN2. So you can make your hand on something less cold and then go to the real thing. Uh, there will be, of course, uh, be there Dr. Wies and Vivi. So if you are interested in meeting the top guys of your country, that might be also the great occasion to learn from the best. Uh, other event coming up right after that. Actually, just the week, the after, week that. after. The week <laughs> after. The weekend after. So that's going to be two weekends in a row. <laughs> Yeah, so two weekends of live stream, guys, on OCTV. But uh, so it's going to be at the Gamers Assembly in France. That's the European uh, stop of the uh, World Tour, the official stop of it. 
Um, it's going to be a big, big event. It's in a partnership with MSI. So it's going to be the MSI MOA 2016 Europe competition for overclockers, uh, uh, for extreme as well as for amateurs. And there's going to be an MSI OC Academy. Uh, so since MSI is the biggest partner, we've uh, decided to rename the workshops and the competitions to something more fancy. And it's, uh, it's going to be really, really cool. So um, having MSI on board for that event, uh, as well as partners, see Sonic for PSUs uh, and Clef for memory is going to be really cool. Other event again two weeks after that <laughs> is going to be the LAN ETS. It's not stopping. <laughs> the LAN ETS, which is the biggest LAN party in uh, North America besides QuakeCon. Um, so this one is 2,000 gamers. Uh, it's going to be uh, on the weekend, if I'm not mistaken, of the 15, 16, 17, etc. of April. Um, yes. That's going to be in Montreal, Canada. We've had last year the pleasure to meet uh, Ras Parte as well as uh, Mr. Breeze, Jigsman, um, Mark 00, uh, 053 or 0053, I'm not sure. Um, as well as some other local overclockers from North America, from the US, very close. Uh, it was a pleasure to see you see all of them there so it's going to be a, a lot of uh, fun again with a workshop again with a competition and again with a gathering and partner for that event is a uh most likely going to be uh, asus as well as seasonic for the psu so some uh, strong seasonic partners for the there. PSU. seasonic for the psu yes. that's for sure yes yeah, uh, we can already old. announce we can already announce as well i guess the uh, supplier for the ln2 yes and praxir which is our, our um, very um, very awesome partner for North America who is uh, helping us with the supply of the LN2 as well as the logistics to get to uh, into the building, the storage and everything. We're going to have 1500 liters for the North American event, 3000 liters for the Europe event. Um, Jeez. So plenty of LN2 for everyone to play with. Plenty of LN2 for everyone. Yeah. That's going to be fine. And we're uh, going to release some cool, awesome new thing with Streetcom we are working on, which I'm not going <laughs> to tell you anything about, but this is just a big leak. Okay, it's, okay guys. It's designed for you have You have to watch the stream. <laughs> you have to watch the stream because that's going to be just insane and blow your mind. I think I, we we didn't even oversell it. It's not it's not even close to oversell that. It, it blew anyway, my mind that's going to be it. awesome. <laughs> that's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. Okay, uh, thank you, Timothy. Is there, uh, so in the meantime, that's just for the event that we already know about, but there's yes. a lot of uh, meetup that could happen from time to time. And there's although some of the overclockers in the Pro OC Championship that can go live at any point or any time uh, benching for these competitions. So uh, stay around, uh, follow us on Facebook on the Overclocking TV page because we usually repost what the guys are doing. So if you want to see what's happening, you can go there. I have two last news to uh, to tell you guys. The first one is the reminder about the uh, OC competition points. As you know, the uh, the points uh, for the competitions are calculated about the uh, um, the the best the best scores and and stuff like this. There's uh, some people losing points in March because the the points the OC esports point are just valid for 365 days, so one year, and there is a lot of people that lost points. Uh, <laughs> in these months but let's face it Dan Cup, the Baron Rooney underscore 20 Sen Raspardi Coldest Nvidia Forever 2 Two Shape CGI 78 Dominator Gubin Basta Stoid whatever the nickname is that's gonna be difficult Loot Silence Raspard again and Web Smile they all lose points so that means the ranking for the competitions is actually evolving these months again so keep an eye on ocesports.io and you can get to the ranking and you will have the live ranking about all the uh, all the overclickers in the world. That, that is actually the worldwide ranking for, for every overclickers uh, mixed. The second and actually the last news is um, there's HWBot announced that they will be introducing a new league uh, that's going to fit in between the enthusiast and the extreme. And this one's going to be called the Apprentice League. And from what I from what I, I, I read on the website on HWBot, that's for people that want to go sub-zero but don't go straight to LN2. For now, for now, there's a big gap in between. You use water cooling and you want to go to extreme or actually you want to go to sub-zero coding, you can use uh, very chilly water, so a chiller yeah. or something. Well, right now, as soon as you stage. make LN2, uh, you go to extreme, right? 
So it's yeah, sure. So you can use dry ice as well. Dry ice is m minus. It's negative 78 degrees. It's not that much. Uh, if you want to go LN2, it's uh, almost negative 200. So there's a, still a huge step in between. So actually, the Apprentice League will fill the gap for everyone that want to go sub zero, but that cannot go straight to LN2. And that's the thing. If you go to LN2 once, you're gonna be you're gonna be jumping to the extreme league. So that's the thing. As long as you 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 use Sub Zero but don't use LN2, you're gonna stay in the Apprentice. And when you're ready to do the jump, like ready to actually jump in the Extreme League, Extreme of looking with Liquid Nitrogen, you're gonna jump into the Extreme. So that's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some of uh, some of the guys that maybe were in uh, in a league that were not directly fitting for them so that's going to be interesting to see i can't wait to see the reaction from the people that are targeted with uh, with this that's going to be uh, quite interesting a lot more people are going to do dry eyes and maybe eventually face change is going to come back a little bit i i do hope Ooh. so because i i did like face change the the face change time a lot like like about eight years ago everyone was running face stage uh, single stage or, or cascade or auto cascade there was a lot of of discussions going on around all that like the how to improve the systems how to change the the stuff and so on that this kind of disappeared in the past year because there was first there was no incentive and then there was no difference for the overclocking pretty much because if you wanted to have higher score you had no choice after water cooling to just go ln2 because there was no scaling in yeah. between most and of the time. if you were applying for points, then you were in the same rankings and <laughs> the guys that were not elite. So it's kind of hard for, it was, a, it was a tough, uh, it's a tough drop in the rankings if you were first of your enthusiast league. And but then, even that, yeah. it's a huge step. If you go from like rookie to novice to amateur, uh, not amateur, the, so then you, you switch and you, you go to the enthusiast and then that was just like it. You just you have to jump LN2 if you want to go extreme. So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I I do think personally, that's my personal opinion right here. I do think that's a good thing to uh, to have here. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe the the upcoming CPU will scale linearly with with cold. So that means maybe the the Zen architecture will scale just with cold. So that 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 could be perfect at, at this point. Maybe the upcoming new Intel. Uh, Canon Lake, Kaby Lake, and all these will scale like it used to be on the on the on the previous uh, on the previous chip. So that would yeah. be uh, extremely fun to see. So if some of you want to check that ranking, uat.hlabot.org, and you go to the ranking um, to the ranking page for the leagues, and there is the tab where you can filter. You can see there's an apprentice one there on testing, so you can go and you can see where you would rank if you would be into that league. Um, so quite interesting. Well, and keep in mind, UAT is just for testing. It's not the uh, official one yeah, yet. Don't that's make your be... submissions there. It's, it's not gonna <laughs> do that's not going to work. Um, that's going to be pushed soon. There is no official date for it, but that's going to be pushed soon. So I guess uh, that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for being here with us. Uh, Timothy, when will be, when and how will be the next OC show? Ah, so the OC show is every week, right? So we're going to shoot the next one early next week. It's going to be out on YouTube uh, early next week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so it's going to be um, not sure what we're going to talk about. There's going to be for sure more information about Rage and the Europe event, especially in terms of uh, competition rules and competition prizes and things like that. Uh, so that's going to be for the Shaibot and World Tour part and there's going to be most likely some other news about maybe some new and upcoming competitions as well as some new stuff that is still uh, in preparation but not announced at the moment. And uh, yeah, so that would be for next week. So this year what we decided to do is that every episode increments the, the numbers. So this one is episode three, the next one will be four, etc. Before we were doing one, one Q&A, two, two Q&A. And it was a little bit confusing even for us. So let's just increase the, the number every time. Trophy, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I told, I told you, I, I was even confused myself, and we are the one driving the show, so, <laughs> so we had to change it. So that's gonna be it. Uh, next, next week, that's gonna be the recorded version on YouTube, and the week after, we will have it in here at the twitch.tv forward slash overclocking TV. You can subscribe to this channel if you're watching this live. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching this replay on the YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. 
Give it a thumbs up if you like the topic we talk. Let us know in the comments if you want to talk about some specific topics. And we will see you guys again next week for the next episode of The Aussie Show in Season 3. Until next time, keep, keep pushing, pushing it. it.